All right, science fam, we are going to be doing the heating curve of water lab. And what I have so far is just a beaker full of ice water. So there's actually ice and water in there. And I have a digital thermometer right now that's just getting used to the temperature. As you can see right now, it's about 0.8 degrees Celsius. I also have a heating lamp that's heating up right now so that when I'm ready to rock, uh, I can put my ice water on there and slowly heat it up. Remember, we are going to take the temperature every 20 seconds and write that in our data table. So when you're taking the temp, you'll go zero time, then you'll do 20 seconds, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, etc. Okay? So keep that in mind when you're filling out your data table. Okay, so let's get our initial reading. This has been in the ice water now for a good minute or two, and there's still ice and water in there. And we're gonna say that our starting temperature is about 0.8 degrees Celsius, okay? So I'm gonna put it on here, start stirring this and heating it up, and we're gonna take the temp every 20 seconds. So I've got my timer on, and here we go. Let's start doing the lab. Now notice when I'm stirring this, I'm not touching the bottom. The bottom part of the beaker will get hotter than the actual water. That's why we'll keep stirring, but try not to touch the sides. All right, and that's been 20 seconds. Our next reading at 20 seconds is 2.7 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna go another reading here. In about seven seconds, it'll be another 20 seconds or so. Our next reading at 40 seconds will be 3.5 degrees Celsius. There's still ice and water in there. All right, coming up on another 20, this will be 60 seconds total. And the temperature is 3.9 degrees Celsius is currently the temperature of that water. Coming up on that next 20 seconds, it's 4.1 degrees Celsius. So that was for 80 seconds, that should have been. Coming up on 100 seconds here. And it was at 4.7 degrees Celsius at 100 seconds. All right, so I'm gonna to continue to heat this up. And while I do, we're going to try to make note of when all the ice is officially melted. Coming up on our next reading, 5.0 degrees Celsius. So notice, even though the ice is slowly melting, the temperature is not dramatically increasing at a fast pace. That'll be important when we look into phase changes. All right, let's keep stirring. Another 20 seconds is coming up, and we're at 5.6 degrees Celsius. So again, we still have ice water in there. Coming up on our next reading, it's 7.4 degrees Celsius. Almost lost all of our ice. We still have little slivers left. We'll keep stirring that. Our next reading is 8.5 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna switch hands here. Still some ice chips left. And our next reading is 10.5 degrees Celsius and barely any ice chips left. And our next reading will be 
13 degrees Celsius and go ahead and circle that 13 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature at which all the ice was officially melted. We want to pay attention to that. All right, so I'm going to slowly take note of the temperatures and put that up on the screen for you until we get to just before boiling. And then at that time, we can, uh, well, let's get that last reading. 17.6 degrees Celsius was the next temperature. That was at four minutes. So we'll go from four minutes and get the temps and then we'll get going with the lab to speed it up a little bit. All right, guys, this is all of the data starting at four minutes and 20 seconds, which is 260 seconds, all the way up to 12 minutes where we end at 720 seconds at 89.7 degrees Celsius. Once we're there, we'll go back to our video and get our data. All right, we're back at 12 minutes and it's 89.7 degrees Celsius. Now we're expecting water to boil around 100, so we should expect some action soon here, but that was at 12 minutes, 89.7 seconds. Let's see where we're at here in the next. Got my timer going. The next temperature was 93 degrees exactly. That was at 12 minutes and 20 seconds. So we're getting close here. Coming up on 12 minutes, 40 seconds. And the temp for that is 94 degrees Celsius. Coming up on 13 minutes here. You can do the math for how many seconds that is. But 13 minutes is 96.5 degrees Celsius. As you can see, slight little bubbles are starting to form, but it's not quite boiling yet. So let's see here. Getting closer. All right, at 1320, the temperature is 97.5 degrees. All right, looking close to boiling, not officially boiling just yet, almost though. Right. 13 minutes 40 seconds the temp is 98.7 keep stirring this let's see here and I think that's safe to say this is boiling at 14 minutes on the dot and the temperature right now is 99.5 now we're gonna continue to watch this for another 120 seconds why? Because we want to see if the temperature is going to change while it is boiling. So here we go. Our next reading temperature, another 20 seconds, is going to be at 100 degrees exactly. 100 degrees Celsius. All right. I'm going to do another reading. By the way, at 100 degrees Celsius, let's circle that temperature. That's when we know it was boiling. And let's get our next reading. It's 100.4 degrees Celsius. All right, so we need to take five more readings. Still boiling. It's at 100.7 now at solid 15 minutes. 100.7 at 15 minutes. Three more readings we need to take. All right, it's at 100.7 for the next reading. Our next reading is 100.7, and let's do one more reading. Six seconds left.
All right, and it's 100.7. Okay, so our last one, two, three, four temperature readings was the same, about 100.7. Now that's normal. When water is boiling, no matter how much heat you give it, the temperature when it, when it boils stays about the same. So we should be looking into why is that? Why when there's a physical change does the temperature stay constant? All right, now that you have all your data written down, you're going to take that and turn that into a temperature versus time graph. And we went through that a little bit in pre-lab, and you are more than capable of putting time in the x-axis, temperature in the y, and getting all your data points so that we can draw ourselves a heating curve. All right? Thanks for watching. Now it's your time to turn this into a graph. Take care, science fam.